The sense of responsibility. Responsibility implies responding to the call of duty, being dependable, and upholding the trust reposed in you by your parents, colleagues, elders, employers, etc. It means fulfilling your obligations. It also means accepting the blame when things go wrong as a result of your actions or decisions. It is easy to dodge our responsibilities, but we cannot dodge the consequences of dodging our responsibilities. Malku, a landless farmhand, leads a life of hardship and penury, working for a rich zmindar somewhere in rural India. What he receives in return for a day's hard toil in the fields is one meal that barely keeps him alive. This deprived man one day performs a heroic deed that becomes a legend all in the routine call of duty. Here's how. It was a starry night and a light breeze ruffled the wheat stalks playfully. Malku sat on his haunches kindling a small fire that he had built with dry twigs and leaves. It was a chilly night and he had been feeling feverish all day. It was his job tonight to ward off the vermin that damaged the crop as it ripened. He had worked in the fields the whole day and had just the time for a brief rest and a day's meal at the Zminda's house before returning to keep watch over the almost ready wheat field all ten acres of it. He had been working for the Zminda for as long as he could remember, had no family, had no complaints against his miserable existence, and quietly went about his work. The Zminda trusted him with his home, hearth and fields for the simple reason that he knew Malku to be ambitionless. That night there was a wedding in an adjoining village and most men had gone to attend the festivities. Watch over the wheat crop, alertly. It's almost ready for reaping, the Zminder had cautioned him before leaving for town on an errand. Malku gazed at the fire as it crackled gently. He wrapped his old shawl more tightly around himself. It was getting colder by the moment. Suddenly, he heard a gurgling sound. The kind that water makes when flowing turbulently through a restricted aperture. Confused, he got up to investigate. The wheat field abutted a wide irrigation canal that the government had built a few years back. This had made cultivation easier and more productive, and enhanced the Zminda's earnings manifold. The water level in the canal was regulated by sluice gates positioned every five miles, and a chokidal kept an eye on each. As Malku neared the canal, he was stunned to see that the waters had risen up to the buns of his fields. He ran swiftly along the buns, towards the gurgling sound, which was now louder. And then to his horror, he saw the gaping hole in the bund where the water was gushing in from the swollen canal. He stood there numbed with shock. If the breach was not blocked, the water would inundate the entire wheat, its stalks would droop down, and the entire crop would be destroyed. Malku knew he had to act, and act quickly. He needed help but the villagers were away at the wedding. If he ran up the three odd miles to the nearest sluice gate, it would be too late. He frantically began to shovel soil and gravel into the widening hole. He worked with his hands and feet, putting everything he could lay his hands on, trying to stem the powerful torrent. He was sweating profusely before he finally closed the breach, putting the last big stone in place. Malku felt the fever rise up in him. He was now shivering. He knew that the breach had not been repaired properly and the force of the water could sweep the patchwork away any moment. What he needed was a bigger, stronger barricade. He had none. Then as he watched the breach intently, 
a small stream of water spurted through. Malku did not hesitate for a moment. He lay down on the breach and pressed his body against the patched breach with all his strength. The torrent stopped. Moments slipped into minutes and minutes into hours. He shivered more violently now and the fever burned his body. He had no means to know that the waters had receded in the canal and that the breach was much above the water level now. It was almost dawn now. Malku felt a deep slumber engulf him. A few of the Zminder's men came along shortly after dawn. They looked around for Malku. They shouted his name, berating him for his negligence in leaving the fields unguarded. The fellow must have had his fill of toddy and slept off somewhere. One man said, I'll thrash him when I find him. Malku was found later. His body had gone rigid in death, but it still hugged the breach firmly. The wheat field was saved, and Malku had died saving the labors of so many men who had told the whole year long. He had not breached the trust reposed in him. Stupid of him to have gotten so drunk. The poor fellow must have dozed off in a drunken daze and caught the chill. Mourned the Zminder. What a way to die. He sighed, puffing on his ornate hookah. Malku's exemplary sense of duty and responsibility, which made him sacrifice his life, went unnoticed and unsung. His legend, however, still lives on.